we do have one question that came early on. Um, is profile of a graduate being used in the same way as a learner profile in your district, Sharon? Well, I guess you'd have to define for me on the learner profile. Um, I'm not as familiar with that. That's not something we have. For us, the portrait of graduate is not about, it's about the research that says like college indicator, the ABC, that's research based saying, if you have an A, B or C, you're going to graduate high school, you have a higher attrition level or rate if you go to college and do college algebra. So it's not as like learner academic piece, but more, you know, just overview of each student saying what skills or competencies have we met? I don't know if that answers it or not, but... Yeah, and then we just had another question um, as to, you know, the overall cost of all of this work that you've been doing, or how did you budget this? Okay. The only thing we really had to budget for um, was to purchase Define Careers, that program, um, which we had been working on a different program, another program, so, and this one was a lot more affordable for us, actually. Um, it was easier to access my counselors really I had a committee that worked through the opportunity which dashboards we could go with and they selected to find careers they're like no this is the one we feel is user friendly so I didn't just select that I had a group that said that so that's really the only money that were out for that and the cords for graduation we purchased the cords for students if they have that if they've written meet and if they've advocated for themselves we don't run around saying go fill out your portrait of a graduate I think that's key to it that this is student advocacy. They have to say, I'm going to demonstrate this and be recognized. Our hope is they begin to see the importance of it and continue to, you know, participate in that and really buy into it. But we're not going to run around saying, did you do the mock interviews the other day? You know, did you do extracurricular hours? Are you an officer? Are you, you know, we're not running around doing that. They have to do it. But we do promote it and we do encourage it and offer them opportunities during advisory time to do that. Oh, and there's another one here. Um, do you work with your community college or a career center to align portrait traits? We did not. Now, I did have some partners. We do have, we have a, a community college um, that we work with. We also have a university that they have a, um, a, uh, ooh, a site here in Broken Arrow that we work with. That's where our early college academy takes place. And then we have tech center, Tulsa Technology Centers, who we work with. So we have partners. In the Ports of the Graduate, I had some of those participants that I knew through that um, participate on the committee, but I really was focusing on just, they would give input about things or what they were hoping to see. Uh, like an example of that would be like the business individuals. We as the state are like, well, we have to meet that 90% or we are considered chronic absenteeism, right? We can't have more than 90%, you know, we have to meet that 90% threshold. So we're like, if you're here 90% of the time, you have indicated you're career ready. Well, this businessman stood up and he's like, I'm going to fire you if you're only showing up 90% of the time. That's not career ready. So they gave feedback like that. And so the college and the tech center too would say, hey, this is what we see is important too that you might you know, consider. And they were able to add um, their thoughts into the conversation for consideration. So... Um, and I can add a little bit to that, uh, Katie. So when I was a school administrator, um, I, I worked in a district and I, I did curriculum and instruction and I, I worked with my high school English department trying to revamp our curriculum and they insisted that what they were teaching was something that all colleges anticipated students graduating with. So through our, uh, we have an a intermediate unit, which is a, a service agency that serves all of our school districts in our area, we got them together and we got all the high school English departments together and we got six college and university English professors together. And at that meeting, we discussed what the colleges actually anticipated and all the English teachers were so far off. I mean, that's, I think it's critically important to involve colleges, universities, tech schools, anywhere your kids are gonna go uh, to get them to be part of the planning, because with the misalignment, you know, you end up with students are set up for failure. Thanks, Mike. Um, and then we have one more question for you, Sharon. Uh -huh. um, is your ICAP housed in the Defined Careers program? Yes, it is. So our ICAP calls for kids to do interest inventories every year. They're to set up goals, their smart goals, and work through that. 
we also now have started where we've added all of our um, courses through that. You can upload your courses into Define Careers so our kids could set their pathway. So they like, this is what I'm taking my ninth grade year, 10th grade year, 11th grade and 12th grade and outline that, check it off. They That way they're working through it. Almost like it's almost duplicating what they will be doing as a college student, understanding the degree plan and being able to work through that. So yeah, we everything we do for ICAP goes through that. Um, our internships, work-based learning, things like that are all found through that piece. Wonderful. Well, that is all the questions that we have. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. And um, as soon as the recording is ready, we'll send that out. Along with, there was a question if you'll have, um, if they'll be able to get the slides from um, the both of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we'll send. You can do that. Yep. Can Absolutely. Do that. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question here. Do your students also complete a work-based learning experience? Yes. They're required to complete two of them between ninth and 12th grade. What we have done, we've worked with our chamber, our chamber of commerce who work with businesses. And at ninth grade, we offer a manufacturing day where manufacturing businesses, they send some an industry leader or workers to come present to our kids and do activities. We have a health day. So those technically meet that, but we still need more things. So we've added things at 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. For Oklahoma, you can't start doing internships until you're junior or senior, but we offer that um, widely to our students, you know, so there's a lot of um, opportunities for them there as well. Oh, and, we, and just someone said, you're doing amazing work. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Right. Oh, and I want to do a shout out to Jerry. He said his grandnephews come to Broken Arrow. So I'm going to have to go check them out. So um, tell him thanks for letting me know. But it is, it, it, it's very good. I mean, I feel good about what we've done, but it's still a process and it's a, a continuation of continually talking with your teachers, your counselors, your admin to really find the holes and to make it better. Um, and I could not do it by myself. It takes my team, the whole team that works with me, my admin, they, my counselors are so strong. So it takes the village to do it, but it's worth it. And I, I look forward to see how we move forward in the future with it as well. So, so thank you for saying that. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Sharon. This was incredible. And again, we will send out this recording um, with the slides. And then if the, you have any other questions for either of our presenters today, if you want to respond there, we'll make sure that they get them and um, can respond uh, to you. And, and good luck to everyone here on your portrait of a graduate journey.